Machine shop. <laughs> yeah, boy. What's going on, guys? Today, we will be taking a look at Outward's most formidable bosses. These are the ones that were added into the game with the Three Brothers DLC, and they're pretty unique. You'll first need to complete your faction quest and the new Sirocco quest line. This means all of the town building must be done up until you defeat the Crimson Avatar. One of these bosses is an upgraded version of him, so they lock these bosses off until you reach that point. This Caldera region is the only area that has four unique arena bosses. Every other region only has three, so we have a lot more to do here. Let's go over where each one is at and how you can defeat them. The Tower of Regrets can be found directly behind the Primal Ritualist's hut. Enter and there will be an altar you must interact with inside. Unfortunately it's locked behind a gate so you need to exit out the back and re-enter at the top of this elevator. A lever there can open this gate. Near this elevator that uh, doesn't really work anymore, you'll see an altar that looks remarkably similar to the ones the Blue Chamber Collective use in the Necropolis. Interact with it after you have 8 blue sand on you. The altar and the blue sand are not entirely native to this region. Our character's grandmother came to this region looking to destroy the Scourge. He was originally in charge of Sierzo, so this setup kinda makes sense if you think about her past. Once inside the arena, you will be facing three different enemies. None of them are particularly large, but they are very agile. The grandmother herself looks like a purple or pink shade. She can't be harmed. Attacking her will do absolutely nothing, so don't even try it. You damage her by defeating her two guardians over and over. This means that neither human has a ton of health, but you need to keep defeating them until the grandmother has been killed. Additionally, the Grandmother has only one main ability. She can send a massive cloud of dust at you that almost always knocks you over. It's very dodgeable, but it can be hard to see when you're fighting two other enemies. The Elite Cryptea Witch is weak to decay and fire. She will shoot a frost shard at you like most ice witches and can also hit the ground with a shockwave of sorts. Her most annoying ability, however, is the Lightning Strike. This is what the player can create if you have a Wind Sigil spawned and you activate Conjure. She will use this quite often and it deals a lot of lightning damage as well as some ethereal. This enemy is not overly strong and can easily be taken down by afflicting her with fire and poison. The Elite Cryptea Warrior actually has the same weaknesses as the Witch, Fire and Decay. This guy is the frustrating one however. He only has one main attack style which is meleeing you with a halberd but he will also throw bombs and set up traps constantly around the arena. This is a very unique encounter because it is the only time you must face traps that an enemy is visibly setting up. These massively decrease your mobility as stepping on one instantly inflicts bleeding and deals a lot of physical damage. This guardian will also throw toxic bombs which deal 60 decay and poisons you. By himself, the warrior is no real threat, but since you must fight him while also avoiding attacks from the witch, he becomes quite the challenge. Once again, afflicting burning and poison on both guardians will destroy their life bar quickly. Both of them will die multiple times during your battle. When they do, there is a brief window where the grandmother must resurrect them. This is usually when you have a one-on-one -on -one fight with whatever guardian isn't currently dead. I prefer to focus damage on one at a time to continuously get these 1v1 fights until the Grandmother is fully defeated. After the battle, do remember to check near the chest as an interesting book full of lore can be found there. The Elite Tor Crab can be found inside the River of Red Cave. This is one of the smallest dungeons in Outward, but it also contains one Scarlet Emissary, and the terrain there is much too small for a fair battle. Take two Vagabonds Gelatin to the Metal Bowl in the middle of this dungeon. This is where you can find the arena. If you build the food store for your town, which I highly recommend, you will get Vagabonds Gelatin for free and it's a much easier way to get this stuff. Make sure you don't turn it into tartines though, it needs to be jelly. Once inside the arena you will be met with a massive, massive Tor Crab. He can be very formidable if you let him, but here's a way to make him die pretty quickly. Use an ice varnish and knock him down as much as you can. That's about it. He's very weak to ice and since he doesn't have that large of a health pool, he can die pretty quickly. The big guy is pretty immune to fire, so don't use that, but poison will still do a lot and can be nice for extra damage. Avoid the Tor Crab's melee attacks as usual, but our friend here will also shoot out massive blasts of fire, frost, and lightning damage that linger around the arena. 
It's very easy to get overwhelmed by this since they don't go away for quite some time. Letting the crab shoot these all over the arena will almost immediately force you to die as you won't be able to move anywhere. Getting in close and forcing the melee combat works best here, and seriously, just an ice varnish will end this fight in under a minute. Not really that difficult of a boss, but only if you know what he's weak to, otherwise this battle seems insane. Another interesting detail about this fight is that after you return to the altar to enter it again, it will be frozen over. It looks really neat because you're inside a cave filled with lava, so just thought that was pretty cool detail to add into the game. The elite gargoyles can be found in New Sirocco right underneath the town you have built. In order to fight these monsters, you'll need to not fail the town building quest. As I've recently covered, it's pretty easy to not fail this, as we have quest timers now which let you see exactly when you should have a task completed. Once the Crimson Avatar is defeated, a gargoyle can be found near the lava river in your town. This one is dormant and will not attack you, but he is the entrance to an arena. Bring petrified organs, chromium shards, and voltaic vines here. These come from the samples you have been gathering for a long time. Interact with the statue while having these in your inventory and you will enter a dark arena full of danger. Three elite gargoyles need to be defeated and luckily you only have to fight one at a time. Unfortunately, the arena is very hot so make sure to bring weather defense potions. A tip often given to players is to potion up after each gargoyle as they won't fight you immediately. But if you happen to use totems, this is not the case. Hope that they don't jump you, but be prepared for it. The warrior will fight you first. This enemy is closer to your basic gargoyle. He will attack you with a fast flurry of sword strikes and also hit the ground with a large AoE. This AoE can inflict mild petrification, which will instantly kill you if you get petrified. So be sure to dodge a little early on those blast attacks and any ranged combat makes this one okay to deal with. Melee builds can usually block most of his flurry for a short attack window. The mage is up next, and he's a bit more of a challenge. Once again, this guy has an AoE that deals mild petrification. I recommend fighting regular gargoyles more often to get used to dodging this attack, because it will pose no threat if you truly understand it. This construct also shoots a magic projectile, which deals decay damage. If this knocks you down, he will shoot you with it two more times, so don't get hit by it. I recommend staying in close to focus on melee combat rather than dealing with his magical abilities. Lastly, we have the hardest gargoyle, which is the Alchemist. This one sucks because he casts a buff on himself, which heals him and provides an insane 20 protection. Again, he has that AoE attack and will use melee, but dealing with that shield buff is pretty difficult. Elemental damage and raw damage should be able to cut through this, but just know he will take a while to defeat in most cases. Fortunately, this fight can become quite simple if you buff up for ethereal damage. Gargoyles are not weak to anything but that gorgeous purple damage type, and since they are immune to bleeding, poison, and confusion, ethereal is your only hope. Confusion is one of my favorite status effects at this point, so it sucks these statues are immune to it. Nevertheless, we always have that ghost drum and dreamer halberd, which makes short work of this fight. Lastly, we have the Elite Crimson Avatar, which is the ultimate Outward boss. This is quite possibly the most challenging battle you will find in Outward, as it is very easy to become overwhelmed. Remember that you fight the Crimson Avatar in the new Sirocco questline. This guy's an amped up version of that. Exciting, am I right? To find him, enter the Vault of Stone, and near the back of this cave, a dead corpse attached to a tree is there, where you can interact, to travel to the arena. You'll need to sleep in an ethereal totemic lodge to enter as the buff is the key required. Unfortunately, this buff sucks big time and makes you very weak to physical attacks. Again, this buff is only required the first time you enter, so if you can't manage with less defense, just come back again after you fail the first time. The lodge can be crafted with any advanced tent, hackmanite, ghost eye, and predator bones. Sleep inside and enter the hardest fight of your life. This fight is insane but manageable if you understand a few things. The Avatar has 6,000 health, meaning this is a very long fight. He's nearly immune to decay, so obviously don't use that. Fire and lightning weapons are perfect since he's weak to them. Sadly, he's immune to bleeding, poison, pain, and confusion, so you aren't going to get much help from anything but fire. His attacks have a lot to them, so I will just give you the basics. There's a laser that he eventually shoots twice, fireballs that are easy to avoid but clutter up the arena, 
massive fire blasts that are slow but very large. He can also whack you in the face with his staff. One attack that often gets overlooked is this absorb effect he does, and it can be quite difficult to avoid. He mostly does it if you stay in close, and figuring out how to read this attack helps out big time. That was a lot, I know, and there isn't one perfect way to take him out simply because he tries to overwhelm you. First, we need as much fire damage as possible, so grab an obsidian weapon, fire varnish, and fire boon to start out with. Then, get the ghost drum or sky chimes, because having a totem as backup will save you from going insane. Then, make sure your armor will let you dodge often and block at least four attacks in a row without you falling over. Stagger is king in this game, but the avatar always regenerates his stability, making it hard to destabilize him. A meteoric bow makes this fight quite easy, as you get more time to read attacks from further away. Melee builds, however, will need to stay in close and only back up when you notice him summoning some ethereal attack. This is one of the few boss fights in Outward you just need to memorize what attacks are what. Most bosses you can get away with full resistance or insane knockback, but it won't work here. You have to take note of what he looks like when he's casting each attack and constantly be making the right move. This all being said, if you can knock him down over and over, do that. Wind Infuse is always great if you have it because a fast weapon will be required. Mages can just be mages. You guys have plenty of options, and we'll just need to avoid the red fireballs and laser beams for most of the fight. This is the ultimate challenge, so if you're having trouble defeating this monstrosity, just keep trying. He isn't that easy for anyone. Caldera is the only region to get four unique arena bosses, and each provides a unique challenge that will test your very will. Using the correct element and having enough buffs will get you through these fights eventually, and when you finally beat them all, you've basically defeated the hardest things Outward has to throw at you. I think Caldera is an amazing region, full of puzzles, bosses, and adventure. Get over there, and take down some epic monsters. Thanks for watching the video, and I'll see you in the next one.